John with the Black Legacy in the 21st century. Welcome to the second edition of Deacon John's podcast show. Today is meant to be an inspirational show. Unlike last week's, we had a interview with uh, the great grandson of Ida B. Wells. But this week, I brought in two young men with me. I wanted to share with them uh, this opportunity to have a conversation about a virtual vision board. And if you know anything about vision boards, you know that they can help you obtain all your goals and your dreams in the future. So I'm here to share with you my experience, but also the experience of these two young men. So to my left is Isaac, and to my right is Brandon. And they're both here to share their experiences with me that they had in a school setting. So, Isaac, I'll ask you first, what was that experience like when you first learned of the vision board? So, learning about the vision board, it was actually pretty easy to me, speaking that I am a creative dude. I like doing anything that's very creative. So, it was very fun doing it to put my dream down, actually on something and actually plan it out and see what I'm going to do to be able to achieve this dream. Okay, excellent. And Brandon, you mentioned that uh, you also participated in the vision board process. What did you learn from that? Um, I re from the process itself, um, just being able to, like Isaac said, just being able to like put down my dreams and like my goals and um, future aspirations. It's just, it was just like very a very like liberating experience to say the least. Because just being able to like visually see <laughs> my dreams my goals my aspirations just put it down on paper and that not like jot down the steps that i need to take in order to reach those things it was just it made it simpler in a sense not like i didn't it, it helped me not blow it out of proportion basically because i feel like a lot of the times when i think about it that's what i tend to do i blow things out of proportion like i gotta do this gotta do that but just being able to like write it down just jot it down it, it was very like it made it simplistic for me, basically. And I think, you know, that's exactly what a vision board does. It helps you, first of all, keep your vision, your dream in front of you. And it does look simplistic, and it is simplistic when you can see your future before you. You know, I like to think, and I tell people, gentlemen, that, you know, you have already obtained that which you desire. You just haven't arrived there yet. And a vision board is a good way of getting you there if you follow the steps. So what are the steps in creating a vision board? Somebody want to help me? Mm -hmm. So the steps is mainly think about what do you actually want to put on the board. Think about what do you are willing to achieve or goal do you particularly want to reach. Once you figure that out, then you're able to put things on a vision board and put things that are necessary has to do with your goals. So let me use an example. Let's say I want to buy this car. It costs roughly 15000 What am I going to do to particularly get this car that I want? And the steps you can take is start applying for jobs, like list out jobs, like, oh, I can work here, I can work here, something that do with your talent or something to do with your skills. Or you have like multiple options of getting that vehicle you can ask people even though I don't suggest that <laughs> you, you don't be in debt that's all I gotta say but once you figure out how to get that car it can be a vision board can be used for multiple things other than that also let's say schools post what schools on your vision board you can 
then list out equalities like oh this school offer this but this school offer this then don't forget about the main important thing is cost how much are you willing to pay for school how much are you willing to pay for the tuition and all this stuff and able to go there or what type of scholarships do they particularly offer where you're able to get the money to go there but overall, my message is that a vision board can be used for anything. Alone you have the idea in your mind or a goal that you have that you're wanting, you have to be wanting to get this, then uh, making a vision board is easy. And I agree. And Brandon, do you want to add to that? I mean, that was a mouthful. Huh? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he just really said it. Kind of summed it up, huh? Right, yeah. Um, also, I would add, like, um, don't think a goal um like it doesn't have to be a sons of a specific goal like it can be long term short term mm -hmm. it's like whatever you feel like you to like, that you need to like, be able to put on the board <laughs> or you have to put on the board to you know visually see it and like see it happening in your mind after you put it on the board is that's really what a vision board is for really like just being able to see it happen like you know, out in front of you so thank you <laughs> and, and thank you, sir. No, great comments, you know. Um, and I think that when I talked with you guys yesterday, when you kind of learned, you know, how I achieved my vision board, we didn't necessarily talk about the vision board as much as we talked about the process mm -hmm. after the fact, right? Mm -hmm. So let me tell you what my experience is in creating a vision board and why I needed one. First of all, I've got a original copy of my vision board. This is it. Okay? So that's not much, right? But it actually is because any time that you put anything on paper, you give the universe permission to make it work, to manifest, right? The key is putting it on paper. But let me take it a step further, and let me tell you why I believe I achieved my dream. Because for me, it's not just a vision, but it's a dream. And first, you got to understand where dreams come from. Dreams come from God. God plants that in our hearts. He plants that seed of, of thought. You know, he gives you that dream, that desire. Now, a lot of people may not realize that, but that's something that I think I realize. And I'll tell you why. This vision that I had, this dream that I had, wasn't necessarily motivated, inspired by something I wanted for myself. I wanted this for the community. Now, there's not a lot of people that you're gonna talk to that are gonna tell you that, you know, my dream is to do something great for the community. A lot of people are going to do it for themselves. They see that car. They see whatever it is, short term, long term, what they want, but it don't have nothing to do with community. Now, the way that I got inspired by helping out the community, it was a neighbor of mine who was eight years old when I moved to Wisconsin. You, learned, you, you heard this story, right? Yeah. And when I came back from Wisconsin to Chicago, he was at 14 years of age. But by that time, he had gotten involved in a gang. And I'm taking notes. I'm watching him change over the years. And I'm saying to myself, my God, somebody needs to get a hold of this young man. I said, because this young man is headed down the wrong path. You know, his mom and his dad divorced. And you can hear the sirens probably outside right now. You know, there's constant turmoil in the world that we have to, at some point in time, address. And so this is what I did in relations to this young man. I said, I'm going to get at him, and I'm going to be a mentor to him. I'm going to fill in the space where dad had left. That was my objective. And then I learned not too long after that 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 young man was shot and killed at a young, tender age of 14. And so, guys, that really affected me because he was a good kid, and, of course, he was my neighbor. I knew him. You know, and to see him, one, go AWOL, but two, be murdered, told me I have to do something about that. And I think we all know, too, how murder in Chicago in particular has really escalated, right? Yeah. So I not only thought about that young man, I thought about all the young men like him. And I said, you know, 
I think somebody needs, and when somebody says, I think somebody, God is saying you. Okay? So he was talking to me. You know, I think, John, you ought to. So that's why I started thinking community is because God wanted me, I believe, to work in the community to an extent. And I believed it because from a child, guys, I believed everything in my heart has been planted there by God. I've got a relationship with God. I've had it for as long as I can remember. As long as my mom planted the idea of faith inside of me and told me that with God I can do all things, okay? And I believed her because my mom was the closest thing to me and she would never lie, right? So I was inspired by that death, but also the same scenario in so many other households. So this happened actually, as I said, when I was in Wisconsin. And uh, something happened in my family, and you're aware of it as well, right? Isaac and, and Brandon, you may not be, but it brought me back to Chicago. And so when I came back to Chicago, I started thinking about where I was going to live. In fact, I knew already where I was going to live. I, I just, guys, I was having these visions before I put them on the board, okay? But I would daydream and I would see myself in places, see myself with people, and it all came true. It all came true. You know, uh, I, so that tells me that the biggest uh, board is in your brain. You know, if you keep it here, most especially here, then you know it's coming from the right place. And so that's kind of how I knew that what I wanted was the right thing because, again, nobody thinks about really the community as much as they do themselves. So I felt like I was doing the work of the Lord, okay? So I came back to Chicago, and I started uh, working on one thing, and that was what you were talking about with a job and how is that job going to help me, you know, go to the next level. And so I got a job, and I ended up uh, meeting my wife that I had saw in my vision when I was in Wisconsin. And I uh, eventually got the two kids I saw in my vision when I was in Wisconsin. And I got the new house that I saw in Wisconsin. And I ended up on this golf course that I read about in the Chicago Tribune. And I said, man, it would be wonderful to play on this golf course. Well, why did I drive up on an engineer who built it? <laughs> and we ended up having this conversation, and he invited me to the grand opening. Wow. And guess what? By that time, I had got so good, at least I thought I had gotten so good about manifesting my visions and manifesting my desires, that I didn't go. <laughs> 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 I, and, and the reason why I didn't go is because I didn't think I had to. I didn't really like golf. I just liked the idea of being under Wacker Drive playing. <laughs> and once I realized that I could just imagine and concentrate and bring that to me, then I was satisfied with that. <laughs> but I don't vision board anymore because I, I am a powerful manifester. Mm. And I know that, and I know I know how to do it without physically putting it on a board. I know how, I, you, you know, you have to, you wanna know how to do it? Absolutely. You have to. Jalisa. 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 Jalisa, Jalisa, pleasure to be here. Thank you. This is such a surreal moment for me because, Oprah, you're on my vision board for am 2018. I? Really? And I am here, so I have manifested this moment. Congratulations. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have manifested this. That's great. That's great. So great. I am here. It is an honor. And, you know, I'm just curious, Oprah, at this stage in your career, and for you all as well, do you even have a vision board? And if so, what type of things are on it? Wow. Yeah. Good Oprah. question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I, 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 do you have one? I don't have one anymore. Yeah. No. I do. I still have things I want to accomplish and things I want to do. I think there's so much more to do. And I think the great thing about life is you have so many chapters. Yes. And they got to be all different, too. You got to mix it up. I want to run a marathon. You do? I want do to it. before I... I support you in that. <laughs> You've done you, it. I've done it. I support wow. you in that. You, everybody should do one. One. Yeah, I you should do, do one. Let's do it, though. Wrinkle in time. We'll do a wrinkle in time marathon. You know, but I don't vision board anymore because I, I am a powerful manifester. Mm. And I know that. And I know I know how to do it without physically putting it on a board. I know how... I, 
you, you know, you have to, you want to know how to do it? Absolutely. You have to meet the vibration. You mm. can't be above or below it. It's just what I was talking about, negative energy, positive, yes. positive energy. In order to draw the thing to you that you want to come, mm. you can't want it so much that you fear that you won't get it. Mm. You have to want it. So in, in order for me to be on your vision board, you must have put it there and then you let it go. Yes. And then you weren't thinking about it every day, every day, every day, because <laughs> you can't, it doesn't come to you that way. You have to do it and then you have to put it and then you have to meet that vibration. You have to prepare yourself to be there and ready when it shows up and you were. Julissa, you were there. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. That's such a word, and it makes me think about, in A Wrinkle in Time, there were so many powerful messages that were very spiritual, very deep, and I just want to touch on them for a second. So the first one, you know, they said, you can, you can fear the answers, but you can't avoid them. And I'm curious, over throughout your journalism career, have you ever asked the question that it was difficult for you to hear the answer to? Uh, yeah, I actually have. And I won't tell you who the person was. I got, I got really shut down by someone who said, that's a stupid question. And it would be the person you'd least in the world would expect to say that, mm -hmm. which is every journalist's fear, yeah. you know, to be in a position where you ask a question and the person said, well, that's a stupid question. And, um, I refused to let myself be shut down, but I was so taken aback by it. Uh, and then you, then I was like, well, was it stupid or was you, you, you didn't understand what I was saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. And so, uh, but I didn't let that deter me. I didn't let that deter me at all. Absolutely. And there's another powerful quote. The wound is the place where the light enters you. We were just talking That's about it. That, that is, yes. it's, it's, it's so it deep. Like... And I would just love to know, you know, is there a painful moment in you all's life that actually ended up being enlightening? The reason why that, we were just talking about this before you came here, the reason why that, thank you for bringing it to our attention, uh, the reason why the wound quote is so profound is because once you've been around as long as I have, you know that there is not one single thing that has ever happened to you or will happen to you that will be wasted. Mm -hmm. If you look at every single crisis, difficulty, challenge, every joy-filled moment that comes into your being, Everything is there showing up to make mm -hmm. you more of who you were meant to be. And it's showing there to help, it's showing up there to help you. Nothing ever is wasted. Mm. A wrinkle in time. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. But I started to carry around a folder, as I told you guys yesterday. After I drew this, I started carrying around a folder, and I started uh, taking magazine pictures. And I would put them in this folder how I wanted my place to look. And then I also made sure that I carried a camera with me. At that time, I don't think we had camera phones. Okay, and I had a camera though, and so wherever I went, I took this camera. And if I liked a certain thing that I saw, like a kitchen that I eventually built out in the clubhouse, I took a picture of it. Like an arch that I saw at Long John Silver's, I took a picture of it. And I did a picture or took a picture in other places too. And so my place looks like, you know, uh, Long John Silver's. <laughs> It, it, it looks like uh, up north somewhere, you know, loft look and the whole nine. So I exhausted, I thought, every possibility of how I wanted my place to look. And I'll tell you this, what makes my presentation more different, though, than maybe what you guys got in school is the spiritual element. See, I had to get God's permission to do it, first of all. You know, the Bible says that man makes plans, but it's God who orders his steps. So you can make all the plans in the world, but if God got something else for you, then it, you might end up in the fork in the road, okay? So you have to be aware, guys, what God wants for your life. Um, my suggestion would be for you to ask him that question or say to him, Lord, this is what I want to do. Can I have your agreement in on it? And then can you confirm it for me? And guys, I could give you stories after stories after stories where I've had conversations with God and he confirmed it. And not only did he confirm it, but he did it to a point where, uh oh, it can't be nobody but him. You know, if I said, God, this is what I want, well, he did it exactly how I want it, but he added to it. And that's what God does. That's how God answers us. It's never really the way we expect it. It's always better. 
And, and God does that to me because he wants to supersede your own thought vision of what you think you want. He's going to show you always better. So I would say that the key in me obtaining my goal, my vision, my dream, is getting God's involvement. Okay? Uh, and when you have God's involvement, and you now have his partnership. So now you have supernatural powers working on your behalf that's going to open doors. And you remember I told you all about my day labors? Remember I told you about the masonry guys? These are people, look here. I was a general contractor and I didn't have to make a phone call. I didn't have to go anywhere. People were coming to my door saying, can I help you? And that's how I constantly got the confirmation that God was involved. So people, today, if you're going to do a vision board, make sure that, or at least hopefully it's on your heart. You know, hopefully it's something that you really desire. And yet you too get God's agreement on it. Because if you get God's agreement, it's a done deal. It's a slam dunk. I guarantee you that. So all you got to do is walk with the Lord in whatever endeavor that you want. And then you put it down on paper or that cardboard that I have behind you, Isaac. You know, you get something that size and you can put all the steps. You can put just everything on that. So really, as you can see, though, you can get it as big as you want or as little as you want. It worked for me. It may work for you. But it may not. It depends on how big your dreams are. And if you listen to Steve Harvey, he says all the time, dream big. <laughs> okay, so I would suggest that you guys dream big. You know, don't, don't shortcut yourself. Don't think small. Think big. Because each of you gentlemen have the abilities to achieve whatever it is you want. Right? And so when you do that and you start putting your vision on the board or whatever you put it on in your mind, your heart, then you start collecting those pictures, right? You start collecting other items. You start having conversations. What I learned was really important, too, is getting you a network of support. Get some people who believe in you. You have those, right? Mm -hmm. and who are they? My friends, my family, teachers, people I worked in programs with, they believe in me. I have newfound people newfound friends actually from those programs who believe in me it's like when i go do things or i learn new go to learn new skills it's a lot of people who believe in me because they realize the things i say and realize the things i think that oh he's genius oh he's smart <laughs> oh, oh he's this he's a very talented person and they can stand by that. They mm -hmm. can see what I see, mm -hmm. and I also can see what they see. Mm -hmm. So they stand by me, I stand right by them. Yeah, and, and that's so key, though. Wouldn't you agree, Isaac? Yeah. I, that is so key. And so, Brandon, you would agree to that as well? Um, yeah. Uh -huh. I have I've found that, and this was not too long ago, because up until, like, before that point, <laughs> I didn't really notice it, but I noticed now that almost anywhere that I go, People kind of um, kind of attract to me. I'm not. I'm not trying to boast. No, we know that. But it's like people kind of attract to me, and I, I personally feel like that's God given. I thank God. It for is doing that because I've been able to have so many opportunities, experiences, um, relationship bonds. It's, it's it's been amazing. So yeah. So it is God. Yeah. And if you believe it, it is. Yes. You know, I like to say that that if you believe it is, it is. Yeah. Because God put that in you. You know, uh, and I felt the same way and still feel the same way that it's something that people see that I don't see that God put on you. And so you're a child of God. <laughs> That's what you are. You're a child of God. Both of you are. And it's obvious, you know, and so accept that role. And it's got to be so different and difficult for you guys to some extent because of the peer pressures that you got to deal with. Right. I mean, it may be easy sometimes, but I think most of the times you kind of fighting against some of these forces, elements that are out here that are temptations, if you will, or, you know, aggravators. Right. So it's important to know, one, that you're God's child. That means you're accountable to him. Right. And you're going to be responsible. So that's a good thing, though, because you know that you have someone to uh, report to, if you will. So 
what I did was I shared this dream and vision with God on a daily basis. You know, I would repeat a mantra or affirmations that, you know, I'm going to get this place. It's going to be such and such a place. Da -da 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 -da. And then you guys saw on yesterday where I ended up purchasing my clubhouse, right? Mm -hmm. Right across the street from a school where I wanted. And at that time, it had been sitting there probably, and I'm guessing, but I know this is a great guess, and it probably was many more years. My building was sitting there for at least 10 years, for the most part vacant, you know. Uh, and when I say vacant, there was no activity other than the man keeping his dog in there and storing old appliances. He would maybe fix them and sell them from there, but it was a decrepit old building. You guys saw the pictures, right? So... The key thing or element for me was location. If I wanted to, if I wanted to uh, work with kids, right, work with youth, particularly black youth, look what I did. I got posted up with the second oldest African-American community in the United States and the oldest African-American high school in Illinois. So I got the perfect spot. Now, I didn't even really think of that per se as heavily as I thought about the building itself. When I looked at it, I said, that's gonna fit my budget. You gotta know that, right? You gotta know that. You, you know, it would have been nice if I could have got this big monstrosity of a thing, but then I wouldn't be able to afford it, fill it up. So I knew it just felt so good. And then if you guys recall when I showed the picture of my neighbor Jim looking, he, Jim was like, what the? <laughs> he was trying to figure out what is he doing? And later he would tell me with my mom that I'm crazy. They thought I was crazy. And so guys, I say that to say, when God is for you, who can be against you? And not that my parent or my neighbor was against me, it's just that I wasn't listening. You have got to believe in yourself and you can't let anyone tell you nothing that you know right here. And what I'm talking about is if you know you want something and that desire is strong, you don't, tell, you don't let anyone tell you can't do it. You don't let anyone tell you to do something else. You stick to what it is that's in your heart. And I wouldn't let anybody sway me. I had guys trying to say, oh, man, we need to change this into like a stripper club. <laughs> no, dude, that's not going to work. That's not my vision. I, I got more community minded, you know. <laughs> we can't do that, right? You know, because their thoughts was making money. And there were other ideas out there, but people were thinking about making money. Guess what I was thinking about? Saving a community. Okay? So what I tell people is that when people offer their opinions, ask them to keep it. Now, if you got your experience, I'm, I'm willing to listen. But don't tell me what you haven't tried. All right? So as it was, those guys weren't attracted to my offer, which was serving the community. So we know what they did. They backed out. And I was happy. I didn't tell them, but I'm like, I don't have to deal with that because I knew what I had. So you gotta be really sure about what you want, right? And I'm telling our audience the same thing. You gotta be sure what you want. One, you wanna believe in God and you wanna believe that whatever it is that you desire, that God planted that in your heart. And it's really up to you to make it happen. The Bible says faith without works is useless. So we could all sit on the couch in our little comfy chair and we can have that little imperial margin king, uh, king or queen uh, crown sit on our heads and we can act like things could just pop the magic dragon like that, but it doesn't happen. The world, the real world doesn't happen like that. We have to go out and work it. We have to work our dreams. Now the only way that I got that place Looking the way it did, you all saw it. I mean, there was a lot of work that went into that. But there was also a lot of support. And it was a lot of support that I didn't ask for. People just came. So the important thing is to get started. And get started right away so you won't lose any momentum. And then you want to affirm what you want each and every day. And you want to pray on it, guys. You want to pray on it. You know, once you gain God's approval, it's done. The only difference is it separates you time. That's the only thing that separates you. 
So I just want to say before closing, what did what impressed you the most about uh, the presentation on yesterday? Oh, like I, I think this is like obvious, but just the general, just the idea of knowing like you you were able to with God, of course, you were able to um, just build it from the ground up, like literally, like we were seeing pictures and like photos of like how it was like you it was stairs like right in the middle of the basement um it was like feces all over the place and i was like to go from that to like the last lap that shows and like the finished work it was it was just astonishing to be honest and it, it was god given so <laughs> you would you really would. it's like you could see it right thank you thank you for that what about you isaac you know anything different yeah the story the story is told like oh my you came a long way a very long way you came from this sheer idea to now it being real life right in front of you then like brandon was saying the building changed massively where it was a huge mess everything was everywhere it was not clean it was dark and all this stuff to now a bright full full beautiful place by the way with the pane windows up top and people throwing parties or different type of occasions in it Man, you outdid yourself on that. Thank you. Uh, when you say, you know what, I, I, I try and remain humble, guys, because I get <laughs> emotional. Um, and it will never go away because I know that I didn't do it. All I did was be obedient. So I'm asking you today to be obedient to your dream. Be obedient. Don't cheat yourself. If it's something that you really want, go after it. It's yours. And God has your back. So you have nothing to worry about. So the reason why it looks like that, and, and it's, I mean, it's unbelievable. God. And, and I walk in there every day, and I still am amazed by that transformation. So, guys, thank you for participating today. Your input has just been great. Uh, I look forward to your own future vision boards and achievements, and I hope that we don't lose connections because I know you guys got bright futures. So I want to tell you audience out there to go out there and get your vision board, start putting your dreams together on the board, on paper, in your mind, in your heart, and just get started. Pray to God that this is what you want and look for his approval. In fact, ask for a confirmation. He'll give it to you. And believe me, it'll happen. I'm Deacon John with Black Legacy in the 21st century. We'll see you next time.